This isn't something that, you know, I'm, you know, I have anything, well, I'm not making up, I'm not dying. I mean, I mean, it's, it, it is what, what, you know, that something's wrong, you know. It's just rough. It's just, a, it's tough that should I look and I see my son suffering and suffering and suffering and I can just change places with him. You're not going to get treated. You're not going to have any kind of, you know, any kind of medical whatsoever. And that's why I didn't understand. I was basically a bag of bones like this hidden in the Florida Department of Corrections, you know, just like I am right now. I have emotions I never felt before in my life. I feel anger. I feel rage. I, 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 there's disbelief. I'm actually breaking bones, fracturing bones in my back every single time they let me go. Those are what my days consisted of for the last, since August. From August of, of last year to now is basically, you know, what I've been doing. I've, I've been sitting in here susceptible to, I mean, going through excruciating pain and fracturing discs left and right because they, they would not treat me. If you know, Kevin, how many emails and phone calls I made on behalf of my son, at the end, they were, they were just hanging up on me and saying, I can't, I can't talk to you no more, I can't talk to you no more. If I say anything, I'm gonna lose my job. And they were, I wouldn't get no answers. I wouldn't get no answers. I always get my, you know, my son, I talk to him, I go see him on the weekends, and I see him deteriorating, deteriorating, and nothing being done, nothing done. You can't give him Tums for calcium. They gave him vitamin D and a lead. They gave him one time prednisone for two days and then they cut him off. They gave him a walker, they take it away. They gave him a wheelchair, they take it away, saying there's nothing wrong we saw in the head. You're, uh, I, called, I called Tallahassee, I called Corizon Medical. That's who's in charge of the prison system and uh, healthcare. I called them in, in Tennessee. I called them uh, right in their headquarters. I got emails, stacks of emails where I've talked to these, or I sent emails, and I got one response. Your son is being treated. By the letter of the law, your son is being treated. Anthony, what does not work now? My entire body is broke down. I mean, my arms, my arms, the only thing I really use, my arms, I can't even say my mind. My mind isn't even there. My, my feet are completely gone. I mean, I have a little bit of movement on my left, on my, uh, on my right foot. But other than that right there, movement-wise, I'm completely done as far as movements on there. And it's just crazy how it just completely, I, I know nothing. I mean, I don't even know whenever I use the bathroom anymore on myself. I don't even know whenever I'm, when I'm urinating. Maybe once a week I might know that I'm urinating. Uh, you know, I have to be told that I that I actually, you know, now that I actually, you know, sold myself. You know, I don't I don't even know. I'm having to be told now. You know whether I have movements and it's just you know it's crazy. I mean, I, for me to go from what where I was to. And even just, you know, in December, I'm in a wheelchair, you know, and actually even in a walker. And, I, and all of a sudden, but I'm going through the same pain and suffering, doing the same, you know, even though I'm going, in December I was in that walker in that position, I'm still in the same, I'm still, I'm still not, I'm still soiling myself as far as the bathroom goes. I'm still, you know, uh, not being able to urinate. I'm not being able, you know, I have no body functions. You know, I've really basically, I'm a, a sack of meat is all I've become, was a sack of meat thrown in, into, a, into a count time every day. You know, I can't believe they counted me anymore, you know what I mean, anymore where I was at. I mean, well, why would you even bother, you know, to, to throw me in general population and actually have me, you know, they actually had me as a job assignment as a... Uh, they wanted to put me on Department of Department of Transportation. Now, how are you going to give me a job at Department of Transportation in the DOC? You know, I mean, it's crazy. You know, I, you actually, I, I'm going to medical because of 
I know my body's wrong, and you're sending me the ICT and telling me we call it, you know, there's a job assignment ready for me to go to work. And I'm thinking, wow, I can't, I don't understand this. You know, that's part I think that's got me crazy a little bit. And, uh, and they threw you right back in after not really checking you out. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I don't understand it, you know what I mean? To throw me back in, to continue to throw me back in, though. Like, it's going to change, though. That's what I didn't understand. My son was given a, a five-year with a three-year minimum mandatory sentence. He served his three years. He was in a work release. He actually, in the work release, out of the prison system. He's in transition house in Kissimmee. My son was in a dog program up there and, and when he first went into Wakula where he trained these dogs for their adoptable. And like my son said, we treated the dogs better than they treat inmates as far as health care. They treat the dogs better. And not that's not the bad. I'm, a, I'm an animal lover and I'm glad. But I mean, this is a human being. His civil rights were violated. His American disabilities act tells you he was violated there too. I mean, he was disabled. Then they just threw him in a jail cell and forgot about him. There's nothing wrong with you. It's all in your head. So when I wake up in the morning, what do I, that's what it does. It was all, all, this, all these thoughts go through my mind. All these thoughts. And, and I have a, it's just a, a helpless feeling I've had for months now. Helpless. You call, you write emails, no answer. Your son's being treated. Uh, if you want to know what's done with your son, ask your son. I asked my son, well, what did the doctor want to talk to him? The nurse won't talk to him. What did they do to him? Nothing, Dad. They just told me I was faking it. Faking it. Come back and see us when you're, when you're crippled. And then the nurse, the nurse would tell him, uh, say, bypass the ambulance and take him straight to the morgue. That's what they were telling my son. It's, it's disgusting as a way they would leave me to use the bathroom. I mean, you want to talk about your civil rights? You're sitting there pretty much in your own feces, you know, and, and left in your own feces to, because that's basically what you're doing. You're, you're sitting there and crapping yourself, and not even crapping yourself, it's actually having to be dug out of you, you know, and that, that's got to be one of the worst things is having to dig your own feces out of your body because you can't use the bathroom because you have no functions left. And you're sitting here and, like I said, in a bed. I'm, I'm laying in the bed right next to anybody who comes in through CFRC. What they're telling me on my grievances is to go to sick call. I do go to sick call, but the thing it is, when I was signing up for sick call, they would take me straight back to the doctor. They wouldn't put me like the rest of the population to where they would go back and be set up for sick call. Well, I'm pretty much going right directly to the doctor and once again being hidden together. You know, so I, I don't, I don't get, I, I would get charged sometime for the sick call, but it was just crazy how they did it because I, I wouldn't have to go through the same procedures others would have to go through. I would have a doctor visit coming up, you know what I mean? But then again, nothing would get done. But Dr. Obendina, the thing of it is, he acknowledged when Dr. Libel and when Dr. Carrera were gone, he acknowledged there was something wrong with me. He's like, I don't understand how you haven't been getting any treatment. He was the only doctor in the, in the Department of Corrections who actually started to realize, hey, look, something's wrong with this guy. You know, I mean, for real, something's wrong with this guy. And then all of a sudden, the other doctors got involved in it. But by then, I mean, you realize the nine months, the atrocities that I can tell you that I, that I spent almost eight, nine months going through. Cancer, cancer, terminal. Those, those, those words are foreign to me. No, no, nobody in my family had cancer. Nobody. It was just, it was, and for my son being 44 years old, where this could have been, I know it's not curable, but it's been treatable. If they'd have done what they're supposed to have done, my God, back in August of 2013 done for him when he was crying for help when I was crying for help from nothing 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 like you didn't exist you're, you're like my son said he felt at the end it was like a bag of it was just a bag of meat dad I just, they just I can't move my legs I can't move my bowels uh, 
I'm laying in my feces, I've got bed sores, and they won't do anything for me.